Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Inta, and welcome back to the channel for another Smite 2 uh, Close Alpha 3 mini patch. There's an absolute ton of balance changes going live in this one, and uh, as always with these uh, mini patches that come in between major updates, uh, we'll be having CFR relatively soon, but as with all of these mini patches, this is live today, most likely right now, uh, as soon as this video goes live. So uh, we'll just go over the balance changes. I like to keep you guys posted on this. You guys have said you appreciate me covering these uh, little mini patches, keep you guys updated and stuff. So yeah, let's just jump right in. So uh, first up, Amaterasu, uh, they have fixed the full charge, not increasing damage on Heavenly Reflection, and I believe Amaterasu Amaterasu is also re-enabled now. She was disabled for a long time, but I think last time I was on Smite 2, she was re-enabled. Uh, for Ares, uh, is 2, they have increased the protection buff uh, by 10 at all ranks, so that's pretty substantial. Uh, as we all know, uh, from like the Fire Giant shenanigans in Smite 2 with it giving prots, a small amount of prots can be a big deal, so this going from like 10 to 20 at rank 1 is actually going to be a pretty massive buff for Ares. Uh, obviously, you do not level this ability first, you level your chains first. And they've also increased the basic attack damage buff, uh, mainly towards the late game. At rank 1, it is going to be the same, but you're going to be getting up to 36 basic attack damage from this in the late game which is uh, pretty substantial, you know, not just for like buffing your ADC or whatever, but for just uh, buffing everyone's tower shred, everyone's objective shred, that kind of stuff. And no escape, they have also increased the damage mitigation. Uh, it's now going to go up to 60% in the late game. So obviously this isn't quite the same as like, for example, a Hades ult where he's actually like doing stuff during the channel and you really want to burn him down with Ares. You know, you've either been hit by it or you've not been hit by it, but it is going to be uh, much harder to burn him down. You know, if he ults when he's maybe a little bit more low health, uh, you can't just immediately nuke him down and stop the pull going off. Uh, it's much more likely to happen now is 60 percent mitigation at rank five on this ability so yeah some pretty massive Ares buffs honestly which i'm a little surprised about i think Ares is kind of fine right now he is outclassed a little bit by like uh yamoja and bacchus and maybe yamiya in the support role but uh, Ares seems kind of fine and these are some massive buffs for him so i uh, definitely expect to see a lot more Ares. uh baron sandy nerfs are absolutely uh, justified this god is completely broken uh best god in the game right now so consigned spirits the two they have decreased the damage by 10 at all ranks uh wrap it up they have increased the cooldown by two seconds at all ranks and like for the party. Uh, it no longer scales down to 70. Thank fuck. Uh, it's going to be 90 seconds at all ranks, which yeah, I think it's fine. This is the kind of like big impactful team fight ultimate that probably should not be lower than 90 seconds ever in my opinion. And with it being at 70 and how ridiculous CDR is in the game right now, this could easily get to like 35, 30 seconds. Uh, it's kind of insane. The cooldown increase on Rapid Up is going to be big as well. You know, you're going to have to hit a few more raw abilities rather than just always having Rapid Up ready uh, to reliably do the 3-2-1 combo. So yeah, some good Baron Nurse overall. I would have liked to see them hit the CDR scaling on the heal to to be honest, I know they did hit CDR in the more recent uh, mini update, or well, not more recent than this one, obviously, but in the recent uh, mini update, they did nerf all the CDR in the game across the board, uh, down to kind of a middle ground between uh, CA3 and prior to CA3. And so that is going to hit the uh, heal on Barons 2, of course, because it does scale with CDR, but I still feel like CDR is really strong and really available, and uh, I feel like that probably should be hit as well. But these are some good nerfs to start with for Baron. Uh, Hikate, triplicate form, they have increased the cooldown from 7 to 9 seconds, so this is her 1. Uh, just going to get a little bit more... Uh, like wait time in between getting that damage out and a little bit less charges uh, to amp up her two in team fights. Uh, Odin, they have decreased the shield health scaling on Raven Shout uh, from 40 strength 50 in to 30 strength 50 in. So just taking off 10% strength scaling on that. Probably won't affect him all too much. Uh, most Odins that I see go literally full tank and the only strength they're getting is from like Blue Stone or maybe Axe or something like that. So probably not really going to affect him too much. And uh, Gunia's Might, they have increased the cooldown from 12 seconds to 14 seconds, which is definitely a, a much bigger change. This is uh, kind of the bread and butter of Odin in team fights. You know, he's often just running around around being completely unkillable with the shield and the jump uh, to make him really safe. And he's just spamming this thing because the cooldown is so low, especially if you throw it for the attack speed boost. So yeah, some pretty decent Odin nurse. He's obviously been a top solo laner in Smite 2, basically since the launch of um, like 24-7 alpha access. But even before that, you could argue Odin probably was a top solo laner. It just took people a while to realize that. Also, I just looked at myself on camera. Dude, apologies for the absolutely, I don't know what's going on with my hair right now. I just took a shower. So, uh, but I want to get this update to you guys as soon as possible. Uh, new uh, Mysterious Fog, they have increased the damage scaling per tick from 10% to 15% percent int and also shining metal they have increased from 40 percent to 55 percent int so yeah new R, she uh seems decent i wouldn't say she's particularly terrible but she's also you know far from the best mid laner in the game there are definitely uh, quite a few better ones and yeah we'll probably end up seeing uh, a little bit more new one i'll be a bit more competitive uh thanatos they have increased the base damage on death scythe uh more towards the later ranks of the ability it's going to be 20 at rank 5 uh, not at rank 1 and hovering death they have decreased the cooldown from 110 down to 90 it's now just 90 at all ranks i think this makes sense i didn't even realize this was on 110 at rank 1 uh, that's a very long cooldown for this kind of ultimate. Obviously, it is an execute. It's semi-global mobility. You don't want it to be on like a 50 second cooldown or anything ridiculous. But yeah, I didn't even know this was on 110. I think 90 is perfectly fine for this. And then yeah, people have been complaining, uh, rightfully so, that Death Scythe doesn't really feel like it hits as hard in Smite 2 for whatever reason compared to Smite 1. And so uh, jump jumping up that base damage a little bit will help, I suppose. Uh, Zeus, they have increased the damage scaling on his 2 by 10% int. And Detonate, they have decreased the cooldown by 2 seconds at all ranks. 
And this is pretty impactful as well because Detonate no longer removes the charges from people in Smite 2. So, uh, you know, it's not like this being on a low cooldown might affect like a uh, basic attack Zeus build because it doesn't remove the charges anymore. You're just going to be getting straight up more stuns, more damage. And yeah, this is understandable. Zeus is, um, a lot of people are calling the worst god in the game. I'm not sure I would go that far, but Zeus is definitely underperforming. You very rarely see him unless people are kind of like trying to troll around with him like a full strength crit build in ADC or whatever. Moving on though to item changes. Uh, Bracer of the Abyss, they have increased the attack speed by 5%. This is the um, intelligence attack speed item that does uh, more damage damage on hit. Uh, Golden Blade, they have increased the attack speed by 5% as well. Uh, Hasten Fatalis, 5% more attack speed too, and uh, increased the penetration uh, from 5% to 10%. Uh, this is a tier 2 upgrade stat loss fix, so I assume one of the tier 2s that makes into this uh, had 10% pen and it was losing that. And weirdly, I'm actually fine with Fatalis getting buffed in Smite 2. Uh, one, it's nerfed from Smite 1's version. You need two basic attacks to get that full reduction, and that's actually a massive difference. And also, like, there's so many good items in Smite 2 that, like, ADCs want in their build that you genuinely do sacrifice quite a bit of damage or, like, utility active effects and stuff like that of uh, putting in Hiss and Fatalis. Uh, Phantom Shell, they have increased the cooldown from 120 seconds to 160. So in a recent balance uh, update, uh, one of these mini updates uh, that I covered as well, they um, reduced the shield that Phantom Shell is giving. They're now also increasing the cooldown. I think this is the better way to go. Honestly, I think leaving the shield as it is, is probably fine because you do want it to be a pretty impactful shield. The, the main issue was this was on such a low cooldown that like just squishies would buy it because you, you're probably going to mitigate more damage with this because of the lower cooldown um, that you will with Aegis anyway. So people are just buying Phantom Shell. And I think you do want to keep it as a good option for supports. You know, I think uh, supports building Phantom Shell is obviously fine. Uh, maybe even solo laners or whatever. You just don't want your entire team building Phantom Shell and every other relic getting ignored, which is kind of what was happening, at least in pro play. Uh, in, in my games and in probably most of your games, uh, people are spreading their actives. That's usually how it goes. But usually if the pros are building four Phantom Shells in every single game, they've got a reason for doing that. So uh, nothing the cooldown I think makes sense. Uh, selflessness, also uh, another one because uh, Warflag is not getting touched. I don't think I've anyone seen, uh, seen anyone build Warflag in Smite 2. Everyone builds selflessness. They have decreased the shield from 10% max health to 8%. So I think that makes sense as well. Uh, Soul Gem, they have increased the life steal from 10 to 15%. This is another tier 2 upgrade uh, stat loss fix. Soul Reaver, they have decreased the int from 50 to 30. I think this is fine. Uh, Soul Reaver obviously did need something. Uh, Reaver was just uh, completely ridiculous. I think I would have rather seen them just uh, either add a smite one component to it it wouldn't be in a bonus balance update not like this it'd be in the real update but like maybe add a smite one style feature to it where like uh, subsequent hits of reaver do less damage or just decrease the damage from the proc in general because decreasing the int just makes it worse for uh like magical like mage users of the item which are like the main ones you kind of want using this and it makes it just uh, no worse for the likes of like susano and loki uh they're just kind of abusing the item i don't know i think it's kind of cool that they can abuse the item it's just uh the proc builds can get a little bit ridiculous sometimes when they have like bluestone heart seeker crusher reaver all in one build. Uh, this really doesn't nerf that whatsoever. It just nerfs it for the mages, which uh, mages are already arguably underperforming outside of a couple uh, specific ones like Akate. Uh, Sunbeam Bow, so this is the new active they added uh, in CA3 where you get those extra two projectiles alongside your basic attacks. They have increased the attack speed by 10%, so it should make the item a little bit more attractive. Uh, Sundering Arc, they have shifted the damage to gods from 27 plus 3 per level to 25 plus 5 per level. So it's now going to be 375 total at level 20 versus 261 before. So yeah, just bringing Sunder a little bit more in line. This is only damage to gods, so still Sunder is really not going to be that useful for objective secure anymore. They nerfed the true damage on it a, a little while back. Maybe it was in CA3 actually. Uh, fairly recently they nerfed the damage uh, for like objective secure on Sundering Arc to the point where like it's really not competitive with like a big mage or a pyro bomb anymore. But yeah, they seem to be going more in this direction of like uh, using it as god damage uh, as opposed to secure because uh, 375 is, is a substantial amount of damage just added on for free. Not for free obviously you, you forgot going another relic but uh, you know what I mean. And finally they have added 5% more attack speed to executioner as well which I think is fine. So yeah, there you go, boys. Uh, relatively large uh, balance update, especially for one of these mini updates. Uh, I expect we'll get more changes uh, when CA4 actually goes live, uh, but they're continuing with their progress on uh, making the game uh, patched more often. And hopefully you appreciate the uh, timely updates from me. I recorded this as soon as these came out. I'm trying to stay on top of it, as you can see from my hair. I just had a shower, but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the coverage and I'll catch you guys uh, for another one later on. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.